Sunny Dollar. Hi, hon. Betty Lewis. Hi, sweetie. Isn't this the most beautiful Sunday morning you ever saw? Or aren't you up and around yet? Oh, wide awake and full of pep. Uh, then listen, dear, you know about the concert this afternoon at the Memorial Hall. Yeah, sure, I was going to call you, see if you'd like to be among those present. I'd love to. And why don't we make a day of it? Suits me fine. Maybe pick me up for an early lunch, take a walk in the park, uh -huh. and go to the concert, and go somewhere and get married, and have dinner together, and maybe find something to do this evening? Sure, why not? You mean it, Johnny? Sure, just let me put on my best bib and tucker, and I'll... Whoa. What's the matter? Oh, oh, somewhere along the line. Uh, did I hear you say something about getting married? Sure, why not? Oh, well, now, look, honey, let's not kid about that. Who's kidding? Oh, honey, you know how I feel about you. And if it wasn't for this crazy, risky job of mine... And it's all off? Oh, no, let's face it. it. It doesn't really make sense right now. Okay, Johnny. Bye. Oh, no, no, wait. Betty. Hello. Hmm. Oh, well, Dollar, you dope. You'd better drive on over and see that gal and try to... Oh, now, listen, honey, I... Well, what I meant to say back yeah, there... Yeah, what did you mean? And what's this honey stuff? Ah, uh, who's that? Pat McCracken, Universal Adjustment Bureau. On a Sunday morning... On a Sunday morning. Listen, I've got to see you, Johnny, right away. You mean for an assignment, some insurance investigation? I sure do. Now, listen. No, sorry, Pat, I can't. Not right now. Look, I'll run on over there to your apartment. No, Pat, no. Now, wait just no, a minute, No, no, I won't be here. I, well, You'd you... better be. But I tell you... Hello? Hello? Oh, son of a gun, doesn't Pat realize that sometimes there are things more important that... Oh, well, I suppose I shouldn't have barked at him. Maybe after I've kind of smoothed things over with Betty, I can... Okay, now listen, Pat. And Pat. Instead of your coming over here, just give me a couple of hours to take care of something personal, and I'll drive over and see you, and you can tell me... Uh, Pat? No, Johnny, this is George Reed at Floyd's of England. George? Well, I know this is a Sunday morning, and it's hardly cricket to cause you... George, to play, but... I'm all tied up. This is a real emergency. I'm sorry, George. It involves Alvin Peabody Cartwright. Huh? That old crackpot? Now, you know you really love that old character. All right, so what? It just happens that right now What's I've more, got... To... he's probably responsible for more of the big fancy fees that have been paid you than... George, listen, I'm sorry, but nothing that involves Cartwright or anybody else can possibly be more important at the moment than something personal I have to do and right away. Nothing, Johnny? Nothing. Not even murder? Huh? <laughs> CBS Radio brings you Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Universal, no, to Floyd's... Well, now, wait. Before this case was through, there were enough insurance companies involved to... Well, anyhow, it's an account of expenses incurred during my so-called investigation of the five-down matter. Three phone calls, all within a couple of minutes, all demanding my services immediately. And I promised to call them right back. George Reed at Floyd's of England, Pat McCracken of Universal Adjustment Bureau, and frankly, more important to me, the best gal friend, Betty Lewis on account of maybe I'd left the impression I was trying to give her a brush off or something. And as the people who listen to these reports know very well, that I would never, never do. Yeah, yeah, that's it. First I'd call Betty. But as I reach for the phone again... Huh? Uh, Johnny Dollar. John, thank goodness I found you in. Ah, uh, who are you? It's vital that I see you at once, immediately. Yeah, I said, who are you? Who am I? Yes. Oh, oh, why, Johnny, this is Harry Branson oh. of Philadelphia Mutual Liability and Casualty Insurance Company. Harry, look, if this call is about business... Well, of course it is. Well, I, I, I'm sorry, I'm all tied up. But if it's something that can wait... I'm afraid because not. Because I, I have two or three other things that I have to so attend to first. So what I will do, John, is this. I will give you the address of where you must go. No, sorry. And then you can fly on out there and do it. Harry, no. And I'm sorry, I'm really sorry. I know you said that, but now, John... Look, I... Well, as soon as I can get these other things cleared away, I'll call you back, huh? Call me back? Yes. But good heavens, John. I'll call you back. John! Holy. What is this, anyhow? I think the world was coming to an end. Oh, now wait. I call back to Betty. Huh? Oh, come on. This is carrying things too far. 
Johnny Dollar. Earl Foreman, Johnny. Now, look. Tri-state life and casual. Yeah, Earl, it's, it's nice to... But listen, I, I'm sorry I can't talk to you right now. But, Johnny, I want you to come out here just as quickly... But I can't. That is... What? I... Now, listen, Johnny. I mean, at least not right away, Earl. Not right this minute, huh? This is very important. Well, something's come up. A lot of things have come up, and I can't even take time to talk to you until I... Listen. Hey, uh, Earl. I'm listening. All right, let me call you back, huh? In a couple of minutes or maybe a couple of hours at the most, okay? Well, as long as I can be sure you'll come out But I can't be... Oh, listen, I'll call you back. Oh, brother, nice, peaceful, quiet Sunday, huh? After all these guys, well, they've all been pretty good to me over the years, so if any of them has got a real problem... Oh, no, first I gotta call Betty and patch things up. Oh, no, believe me, this is impossible. Yeah, go ahead, ring, ring your head off, go ahead. When you decide there's no one here, I'll make the calls I promised, and I'll... And... Oh, well... Johnny Dollar. Johnny, this is Buster. Buster? That's right. Buster Favor, Lake Mojave Resort. Oh, Turn well, hi, Buster. Now, listen to Johnny, me, Johnny, if you're on your way out to California, I've got to see On my way out to California? So, if you're, you're idea... taking a plane out to Los Angeles, why don't I drive on over? Hey, you, did I say anything about going to California? Oh, but I've got to see you, Johnny. Oh, Buster, look, please, believe me. With the crazy way things are going around here, believe me, I'm sorry, but I can't talk to you right now. Uh, but this is important, Johnny. I know. So, uh, sure Johnny... Is, but please, just give me a few, just give me a little while, and I'll get back to you. Whatever you say, but when you do get I'll out I'll get here, back to you. Uh... Oh, telephone, so help me if you ring once more. All right. Hello, listen, wherever you are, this is... Johnny Dollar. Uh, no, not this time. So guess again. What? I said to guess again. What's the matter with you? Don't you hear good? Alvin Peabody Cartwright. Well, of course I'm Alvin Peabody Cartwright. Who do you think I am, anyway? Mr. Cartwright. Johnny, you've got to come out here right away. Yeah, out where? And listen, George Reed called me about you a few minutes ago. He said something about a murder. Me? Murdered? Well, that was the impression I got. He well, was... I don't think so, Johnny. Wait a minute, I'll see you. Oh, no, see. listen, Mr. Cartwright. No, 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 I... no, you listen. It's... Vital that I see you right away. Yeah, well, I'm still here at my summer place in Beverly Hills, Johnny. Always did get the seasons mixed up. Uh, you remember the place? Oh, yes, I remember it very well. Now, listen. Uh, that last time you came here was to prevent a murder. I know, I know, but, but Mr. Cartwright. This time, this time, believe me, Johnny, it's much worse. It's much more serious. Well, what? Uh, what is it then? Well, I can't ever. I honestly don't dare tell you over the phone, but, but Johnny, I, I plead, I beg of you. Come out here right away. But I've already told several people more serious than murder. Believe me, boy, there, there is nothing that can possibly be more important than your coming here. You mean that, don't you? Please, Johnny. Please. I'll be waiting for you. <laughs> Ever notice the way Pepsi-Cola has of disappearing fast? It's easy to understand when you remember how every ice-cold ounce of Pepsi tingles with a taste that everybody in the family enjoys. And then, too, there's no time limit on Pepsi. Day or night, with meals or by itself, work days or weekends, for parties or all by yourself. Ah, but the thing that really makes Pepsi go fast is its light touch. Pepsi always refreshes lightly, without filling so a Pepsi just never tastes like too much. To make sure your supply of Pepsi meets the demand, always buy an extra carton or two. You can't run a household without it. Be sociable, look smart, keep up to date with Pepsi. Drink light, refreshing Pepsi. Stay up and fair and debonair. Be sociable, have a Pepsi. And now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the Five Down Matter. Phone calls, one on top of the other. First from Betty Lewis, and I'd really better patch things up with her. Then frantic calls from Pat McCracken, George Reed, Harry Branson, Earl Poorman, Buster Favor, and finally from old Alvin P. Cartwright, the latter sounding the most urgent of all. Not one of them had given me any details about the emergencies that prompted their calls. But these are men that I've been working for and with for years. And for my money, they're not only important to my insurance investigations, but they're the salt of the earth. And if it came to a matter of which one to favor over the others... Oh, but now wait. Wait a minute. Cartwright lived in Beverly Hills. 
George Reed was worried about Cartwright. Earl Poorman could be taken care of out there on the West Coast, too, and bust a favor. Uh-huh. I got back on the phone and tried calling Pat McCracken. No answer. The same with George Reed, and with Harry and Earl and Buster, even with Alvin B. Cartwright. And when I couldn't even reach Betty Lewis to apologize for... Okay, I tore out to Bradley Field. Expense account, item one, $170.40 for a plane ticket to Los Angeles. Here you are, Mr. Dollar. Okay. Your plane is ready for takeoff. Right, thanks. I'm sorry, again, uh, I, I couldn't get you on a jet from New York to L.A. Well, that's okay, that's okay. But now, you better hurry or... Uh, uh, excuse me just a minute, please. Well, I, uh, hey, yes. uh, let me have the baggage check and I'll... Uh... On this phone? Mr. Dollar. Yeah? Uh, well, very well. Put the party on. Oh, what? This calls for you, sir. Oh, okay. Johnny Dollar. Uh, your telephone exchange said they could get you for me. Huh? Uh, who's that? But who else was here? It's your oldest, your dearest friend, Le Chagri. Chagri? Louis de Marsac, the great cat? But of course, monsieur. Uh, you're plain, Mr. Dollar. Oh, look, Louis, I can't talk to you now. But I must see And I'm you. certainly not going to run over to Paris to see you. But this is most important, monsieur. Mr. Dollar? Yeah, okay. Uh, my plane for the West Coast about to leave. I've got... And I thought that for me, your oldest, your dear... You do not like me anymore? Oh, sure, Louis. Of course I do. It's... And you do not appreciate what... Believe me, I appreciate all the help you've given me over the years. Then you will see Mr. me. Mr. Dollar. Yeah, okay. I, uh, look, i got to make a plane, Louis. You will see me. Mr. Dollar, please, you better hurry. Yeah, yeah. But the real stopper came in New York when I changed for a plane to the coast and with barely time to make it. Yeah. Another of my old pals, another one I didn't want to turn down, Lieutenant Randy Singer of the 18th Precinct. But under the circumstances, and with only seconds to spare. But, Johnny, you've got to handle this one for I'm me. I'm sorry, Randy. It's down on the West Coast, in California. Which Captain. is exactly where I'm heading if I make the plane. Oh, well, that's good. So let me tell you where to go oh, when you Randy, get... Randy, please, I'll miss the plane. Send me a wire or something, huh? Uh, is this your plane right here? Yes, it is. Well, then maybe I'd better climb aboard oh, with you. no such luck. This flight is full up. All right, here you are. Here's my ticket. Fine, sir. Good right aboard. Thanks. Well, I can beat you out there on one of the jets. No space on them either. I tried it. Want to bet? Uh, please, will you get aboard, sir? Right. So long, Randy. Yeah. See you, Johnny. Yeah, pretty shabby, I guess. I mean, the way I treated some of the best friends I had. But what would you, what would you have done under the circumstances? Well, during the brief stop in Chicago, I sent telegrams to all concerned, telling them I'd call them the minute I could. Even a very long wire to Betty Lewis promising just about everything. Uh, short of marriage, that is. And finally, when I pulled into L.A. and started to pick up my baggage and look for a taxi... Johnny! I couldn't believe it. My old contact from the underworld. Yeah. Smokey. Yeah. Smokey Sullivan. Yeah, I'll take your bag. I got a car right over here. You were expecting me? You? Yeah, and a kind of poor old Cartwright. Oh, hey, what's happened to him? What's this all about? Johnny. Yeah? Johnny, I hate to say this. Yeah? Knowing how much you really care for that old man. Yeah, yeah. And after all the pretty awful crimes I have saw before I went oh, straight. come on, come on, Smokey. But what you'll see at Cartwright's place, oh, Johnny, you'll never believe it. Constipation is something people don't talk about much, but it can be a problem for anyone, even doctors. And when constipation occurs, it's interesting to see just what doctors consider important about a laxative they might use or recommend. Well, a majority of the doctors we heard from had this to say. A laxative should be effective, gentle, close to natural acting. A medicine that can be used with complete confidence. Now, Exlax has been popular with many doctors and millions of people over the years because pleasant-tasting chocolated Exlax is effective. Overnight, it helps you toward your normal regularity. Exlax is so gentle, so close to natural acting, there's no upset. That's why many doctors and millions of people use Exlax with complete confidence. Exlax, the laxative that helps you toward your normal regularity gently, overnight. Now, act three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. On the drive into the Beverly Hills address of Mr. Cartwright, I tried to make Smokey Sullivan tell me what it was all about. But he had only one answer for me. Oh, Johnny, you'll never believe it. When we finally pulled up in front of the beautiful home on North Roxbury Drive, I jumped out of the car and tore on up to the front door. 
Come on, come on, come on. What do you think you're trying to do? Break in this house? Oh, Johnny. Mr. Cartwright. Oh, Johnny, Johnny. I, I've been frightened to death. What about, sir? What about? I, I was afraid you wouldn't make it. That's what it's all about. When all those bodies inside Bodies? There, Where? In the library, Johnny. Come. I'll show you. Yeah, I think you'd better. All over the floor. Just, just wait till you see them. Hmm. Well, here. Isn't this the library? Yes, sir. Oh, dear, Johnny. All right, now. Wait, 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 now. Will you... Your gun? That's right. Okay, now. Now. Okay, now. Huh? Oh. No. Look at them. All over the floor. Mr. Cartwright wasn't kidding. There were bodies there, all right. Half a dozen of them. Sprawled around in awkward positions. As though some giant hand had suddenly struck them down. But why? And there was no sign of a struggle, not a... Huh? What is it, Johnny? Oh, I mean, isn't it terrible? Wait a minute. That's Pat, Pat McCracken. I know, I know. And George Reed over here. Well, he's still alive. Shall, shall I call a doctor? Yeah? Or shall I put him out of his misery? What? With a gun, yeah. Earl Foreman over here. Buster Favor. And me? Le Chagri, my dear, my darling friend. All right, now. All right, you guys. What is all this? What goes here? Uh, Johnny. Buster. So help me. Uh, all right, now listen. Uh, Mr. Johnny. Cartwright, will you take that gun away from him? Randy. That's right. I told you I could get a jet out of Sure, we all came out on the same flight. Earl, you son of a gun. How are you, Johnny? Surprised? Are you kidding? And Harry Branson. Glad to Smokey. see you, Don. Uh, so this is why you wouldn't tell me anything, Smokey. Yeah. Fooled you, huh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But come on now, what's the big idea? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, somebody wait a minute, wait a minute. Now, will you stop waving that 38 around, Johnny? Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Pat. Yes, over here. I'll take it, I'll take yeah, it. Yeah, you better, Mr. Cartwright. That's all right, I'll put it back in my pocket. I have it. Right Oop! Down, boys, down! Oh, oh dear, I, I'm sorry. Yes, yes, you'd better be sorry. <laughs> Well, Johnny, it looks like we succeeded in getting you out here, all right? Yeah, well, now, look. Will somebody please start to make some sense and tell me what this is all about? Huh? Why not? Oh, yes, yes McCracken, why don't you speak for all of us? Yeah, uh, go ahead, Pat. All right, fellas, I don't mind if I do. Uh, that's good. It's really pretty simple, Johnny. Today, Sunday, marks the end of five years in your present series of investigations for what... <laughs> for what we like to think is a pretty good lineup of insurance companies. <laughs> yeah, so... Anniversary, Johnny. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anniversary. Oh, thanks. Now, it also, now Johnny, it also completes five solid years of the broadcasting on CBS of these cases you handled. <laughs> handled mighty well, Johnny. Oh, right. And you've performed a service throughout this country. Oh, and I don't get sobbed. No, no, shut yeah. up a minute, will you? Yeah. You've done a great service to the insurance companies, no question about it. Your broadcasting has helped to expose a lot of crookedness, fraud, that sort of thing has saved the insurance companies a lot of money. <laughs> and that means it saved the people, their clients, the people who listen to your program every week. It saved them a lot of money, too. Well, it's... And uh, purely incidentally, these CBS shows of yours have provided a lot of entertainment, a lot of pleasure to literally millions. In other words, <laughs> Johnny, in other words, a lot of people think mighty well of you. And with very good reason. Oh, no. <laughs> but take it easy. Oh, no, you shut up. But to get all those people together to say thanks, well, that's, that's impossible, obviously. So I thought, we thought, that instead of just handing you... I, I mean, if, if we could somehow... Uh, <laughs> fellas, I, I'm doing pretty badly. At this. Yeah. Thank you, Pete, Mr. Well, Johnny, I went over all your radio reports. I made a list of the people who've been most involved in your cases these past five years. And then when I made the suggestion to Mr. Cartwright... That's right. That yes, we... I told Pat that if he didn't let me give this party to do you honor... That honor? I... That would... Are you kidding me? Yeah. Oh, no, 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 and that's why we're here. I couldn't think of a better way to tell you. Well, you happy, Johnny? Uh, well, look, if, if... Well, if you guys think I want to break up over this... Yeah, huh? 
Yeah, Johnny? Oh, well, Pat, Mr. Cartwright, <laughs> Smokey, Harry, Earl, Louis, Randy, Buster, George. Well... Me too, Johnny. Betty. Oh, well, will you look at that? Honest, honey, I won't ask you to marry me. Not yet. Rascal, you out of it. Now, will somebody break this up before we all start crying like a bunch sure. of children? Yeah, let's bring it up. Well, Johnny, we just thought that maybe a gathering of your friends, your real friends, Johnny, I mean that. And if there's anything you want, Johnny, this house, a nice yacht, a couple more cars, or anything, Johnny. Oh, there you go. Anything, huh? Yes, sir. More than this, well, look, if I can somehow hold on to the, the friendship of people like you, that's all I ask. Believe me, it's the most that anybody could ask. Oh, mighty wonderful people, all of them. Some others, too. I mean, behind the scenes and the job of bringing you these radio reports week after week. The associate directors on the show, Kenny Hodge, Bob Shue, the announcer, Johnny Wall, a mighty wonderful technical crew, Bob Chadwick, Bill James, Tom Hanley, and I mean Jack Johnstone, our producer and director, who, well, he's the guy who makes it... Pro Time is up, Jack? Okay. But give them a lot of credit, huh? Because believe me, they deserve it. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Stop and think a minute. Just how well do you know the two presidential candidates? How fully informed are you on the main issues of their campaigns? Well, you can learn a lot about Vice President Nixon, Senator Kennedy, and what they stand for if you listen to Presidential Countdown, a special series of pre-election broadcasts presented each week by the Public Affairs Department of CBS Radio News. Don't miss this important, informative feature. Listen to Presidential Countdown every Tuesday night on CBS Radio. Now, here is our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, a yarn about the lust for gold and the things it can do to a man. The story takes place in the famous historical ghost town of Virginia City, Nevada. Site of the famous, almost fabulous Comstock Lode, where sudden death was all too often the price of finding a rich vein of gold or silver back in the middle of the late century. Or even today, there's gold to be found. And sometimes, murder. I think you'll like this one, especially the switch at the end of it. So join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood and is written, produced, and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in our cast were Virginia Gregg, Larry Dobkin, G. Stanley Jones, Harry Bartell, Vic Perrin, John Daner, Howard McNear, Marvin Miller, Forrest Lewis, and Herb Vigran. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is John Wall speaking. This is the CBS Radio Network. Stay tuned to WROW Albany, New York, for a special news bulletin from Schenectady. <laughs> What's all the commotion about, Julie? We're celebrating your birthday, old boy. By the way, Schultz, how old are you? Listen, son, you're an officer of the law, not a census taker. <laughs> Let's say 21 plus. I'd like to propose a toast. Right down there. Let's listen to Goldie's latest masterpiece. Here's to the mug who is full of good cheer. Here's to his favorite, natural beer. Dial in the drawing room, pantry and pub. Here's to magnificent Utica Club. Brewed by the West End Brewing Company of Utica, New York.
We delay for a few moments the start of pro football from CBS to bring you this special report from Schenectady by WROW Radio News Director Monroe Benton. This is Monroe Benton reporting from IUE Hall in Schenectady. Nearly 9,000 members of IUE Local 301 here in Schenectady have just voted not to strike against the General Electric Company. The vote counting was completed just a short while ago and showed 5,033 in favor of accepting the latest company offer, 2,895 rejecting the company offer, 17 ballots were void. Therefore, a total of 7,945 members participated in the vote here at IUE Local 301 in Schenectady. The actual balloting was conducted on Thursday and Friday, but the votes were not tabulated until today and announced at an unusual Sunday news conference held here at the IUE Hall on Erie Boulevard, Schenectady. The vote again, 5,033 to accept the latest GE offer, 2,895 rejecting the latest company offer. Now, also this afternoon, the results of the balloting for the members of the IUE at the Capel Knowles Atomic Power Laboratories, both in Niskayuna and in West Milton and Saratoga County. The vote there was just the opposite, 172 in favor of striking, 104 against a strike. That is the result of local 301 AE members at uh, the Knowles Atomic Power Laboratory in both Niskayuna and in West Milton. A total of 276 members voted there out of the total union membership of 368 at Capel. The vote here was counted under the supervision of three clergymen and announced at this news conference. However, this vote is connected. It does not mean there will be no strike against GE, or for that matter, that there will be one when the contract expires next Saturday, October the 1st. Negotiations will continue in New York for the rest of this week, and on Friday, the IUE GE Conference Board will meet to review the votes taken by all the IUE locals and GE across the country, and on that basis, make up its mind on whether to call a walkout. Schenectady IUE, being the largest of all the locals, will naturally carry a lot of weight, but today balloting is also being conducted in at least two other key areas, Lynn and Edward, Massachusetts, and Pittsfield, Massachusetts. Earlier this week, employees at Waterford GE voted in favor of a strike, or putting it the other way, rejecting the company offer. Therefore, despite the vote here in Schenectady, the results of the Pittsfield and Everett and Lynn balloting must be reported, plus that of such large locals as the 6,000-member Louisville, Kentucky local, before the conference board makes its decision next Friday. The GEIUE conference board is made up of elected delegates from each of the union locals. They are elected on a representative membership basis, but each local is limited to a maximum of four board members. These delegates are bound to vote at the conference board meeting the way the locals have instructed them to vote. On this basis, the three largest GE plants in the Northeast, Schenectady, Lynn, and Pittsfield, have a total representation of 12 delegates, although they represent about one-third of all the IUE members in the GE chain. It also should be noted that the IUE Constitution states that when the conference board determines to strike to obtain national agreement, all union locals are bound by such action. In 1958, Schenectady, Pittsfield, and Lynn voted against a walkout when Louisville, Kentucky voted in favor. Of course, there was no walkout then. And speculation is that with Schenectady voting no strike today, and if Pittsfield and Lynn vote the same way, the National Union is not likely to call a strike or at least conduct one successfully without the support of these three major northeastern locals. The coming week will tell because there are still five more days of negotiations in New York. Repeating again the results of this vote here in Schenectady this afternoon, accepting the company offer, 5,033, rejecting the offer, 2,895. The capital vote again, in favor of a strike, 172, against a strike, 104. Leo Jandro, the business agent of Local 301, issued a statement just a few minutes ago, and it says in part, the result of the secret ballot vote shows that a majority of the members of IUE Local 301 have chosen to accept the final offer of GE. 
However, Chandro continues, the fact that a substantial number of the Schenectady Local 301 members voted to reject the offer reflects strong dissatisfaction caused by a number of reasons. First, the offer did not adequately meet the demands, or rather the needs, of every group of employees. Also, the outside interference of the UE and its misrepresentation of the company's offer spread misunderstanding and confusion amongst many of our members. Unquote from Leo Jandro. That's the report here from Schenectady, repeating again, IUE Local 301 votes to accept the GE offer. However, the IUE AE Local over at Knowles Atomic Power Laboratories, both in Iskayuna and in West Norton, vote to walk out 172 to 104. The vote in Schenectady again, 5,033 accepting, 2,895 rejecting. Monroe Benton from Schenectady, back now to WROW News.